everybody. Welcome back. It's Annie, the Joy-Filled Stitcher. Not the Joy-Filled Stitcher. Joy-Filled Stitcher here on YouTube as well as on Instagram. And welcome back for floss tube number six. We are on two hands now. We're on floss tube number six. And I'm excited to have you back today if you're returning. If this is your first video of mine, I really appreciate you taking the time to stop by and watch. And I am trying filming on my iPad today instead of my big giant camera in hopes that it will make um, possibly a smaller video, smaller file size video. I can't guarantee the length of the video yet until we get a little bit further in. But I am coming to you today, it is Friday, and it is June 21st. And so yeah, let's get started on some stitchy business and some other stuff. So. When we last talked, it was last Friday, I had a lengthy video and I started it out thinking, huh, this is gonna be rather short. It didn't end up that way. So, first thing, I had a question on my last video about stitching with silks and what I used, if I used a thread conditioner or anything like that. Um, I actually just this week started my very first project with, um, with silks and so I really don't have the correct answers to answer that I don't have a whole lot of experience with stitching with silks like I said this is my first I'm going to share with you here in a minute my first project stitching with a silk um, floss all of my hand dyes are cotton and I really enjoy stitching with cotton threads so to answer the question about is it better to stitch with a thread conditioner or anything like that so far, I've had zero problems stitching with the silk thread that I got. Um, and I don't know if it's just I'm using shorter lengths. I really don't know. So at this point, I'm not really finding too much concern with it. But if so, I've heard that beeswax is good as well as a thread conditioner. And in fact, the person I purchased the silks from sent me a free gifty thing. I don't know what's going on up here. A free gift of some thread conditioner. So I will share that with you when I get to that project and then this the accompanying stash so with that we're gonna go into some whips all right so let's talk some whips so this week was a huge stitching week for me like I'm kind of impressed with how much I got completed okay that sounded a little like conceited but I've had weeks where I don't get very much completed in then this week I've trucked along big time so when we talked last, I had shared with you that I had started and completed, I believe, um, an extra credit task involving using my Prairie Schooler Tree Farm. So last weekend, I was able to get two more extra credit tasks finished, and I think that rounded them all out. So the first one that I spent some time working on is, oh, that's going to be really bright. Well, this might be a drawback is Ship's Manor's Bluebird Sal. It was done as a Sal at the time. I am, obviously the Sal is long over, um, so I'm not doing that. And this is in my Bluebird Fat Bird. And if you go back to one of my other videos, I mentioned how when I made this pouch, which was one of my first ones, the birds are upside down. And so my daughter said, they're Fat Birds! So I've got Bluebirds and Fat Birds. Um, so I'm loving this. It is in all the called for and their ship's manners and they're all these beautiful blues. Um, so, and this is on a mystic hand dyed fabric in, it doesn't have a color way, but it's this really pretty brownish color. And so I have a pretty good start. I'm loving this bird cage. I actually inadvertently read the symbols wrong and stitched the large portion of it in Bonnie Blues, which is the darker blue, when it was supposed to be the Calypso Turquoise Blue, but I don't mind it. And so I'm really loving this project so far, and I like all these kind of quilt Quaker motif looking. And I think this is on a 14 count. And this brown fabric is perfect for it. It's kind of similar to what was originally shown in um, the mock-up. It's kind of a brownish, like real rustic-y brown. So I got a little over 500 stitches in that to start, so I'm really pleased with my start on that. And that was to, I think 
that was to the imperious curse task which was something you saw and you just had to stitch and I purchased that back when I saw it which was kind of I think towards the end of April beginning of May and it's been sitting and it has been eating away at me but I could not start it in May I already had five new starts in May plus just for mania and then I think I had some other ones so it had to wait till June but I was excited to pull that one out and get started on it and I can't wait to stitch some of the birds so then the next one that I stitched, and I think this rounded out the very final of the extra credit tasks with the exception of watching the Goblet of Fire and stitching. And I may do that tonight, might, we'll see. We'll see how I feel about that. So this one was for the task, something that has words, not just letters, but words. So it kind of took away the possibility of just a sampler that has letters. And so this was one I charted myself and it's Jeremiah 2911. I know the plans I have for you. So this is one that I am stitching in silks. Um, I am stitching it in and it's, um, and I hope I don't pronounce this incorrectly, but it is a Mrs. Sedas Imas a silk and this shipped and got to me super fast from Spain. Like I'm very much impressed. Excuse me. So I am stitching this in the colorway popcorn and it is so pretty. This might even be a better view of it. It's got pinks and lilac and turquoise and it's beautiful. And my daughter has already insisted that I then, whatever is left, find something to stitch for her. So I am stitching this on a silk weaver. This is actually the same mint silk weavers that I um, am stitching Emerald City Sow on and it's a 14 count. And so I have a pretty good start on this. So I have almost all of plans I have and I am obsessed. These are beautiful, this is beautiful and I am so enjoying stitching with the silk. I was a little hesitant because I've heard that silk can be kind of um, frustrating at times but this is stitching up beautifully and I don't know if I'm just using the right combination of two strands with um, the 14 count I don't really know but I'm loving it and I highly recommend I have some others that I purchased from her from her Etsy shop and amazing service obviously it arrived in like lightning speed and it's beautiful and I actually have some project bags to show that I got crafty on. And this is going in one of them. It just hasn't made it into it. So for now, it's in a fancy sandwich project bag. Um, I didn't need a very large one. So then, homework was released. And this week's homework, and I actually had it pulled up, and then I think I went off of the site. Um, mentioned, was talking about, let me find it. Sorry, folks was about love potions. So we are in year four, week seven. So we are almost done with year four. Year four has been two months, May and June. And I'm super excited because today all of the new extra credits have been released. So the planner in me is like, yeah, I can't wait to plan. And we have to start working on whip album updates, which means I have to calm myself because then my feed gets filled with all these projects I've never seen before and I must stitch and I must add to my ever-growing collection. So the love you're supposed to create a love potion and in creating this love potion you're going to stitch on five elements for 200 stitches each. The first element is air which is Hufflepuff and it it has to have something to do with air or with the attributes of Hufflepuff. So patience, nature, loving, flexibility, cooperation or you could do the color yellow but it had to be all the color yellow. If you were stitching one of the attributes or something associated with air, then it had to be somewhere in your project. It didn't have to be exact, like the exact thing. Two is water or Ravenclaw. And Ravenclaw. And, um, or blue, the color blue. Earth is Slytherin or green. Fire is Gryffindor or red. And then the fifth element is wood. And so it's just the kind of the all the things about Hogwarts and then the color uh, brown. And at the end, you had to, now if you wanted to do the penalty, you could. And that was 
300 stitches in a project of your choice, but that was only two points as opposed to 10 total. And then you had to say if it worked or not. So I tried my best to fit in some of my like most needy, I don't know they're needy, but my most exciting for me to stitch right now projects. So I was able to fit two of the tasks in with HL Moth, and so I will share that in a minute. And then I fit three of the tasks on Prairie School or Tree Farm, and I'm like over the moon. So let's start. Task one and two were the ones that I used HL Moth for. So for task one, which was Air Yellow Hufflepuff, I used HL Moth to represent the air or sky as moths fly through the sky. And then for the second task, Water Blue Ravenclaw, I said I used the character trait from Ravenclaw of creativity. I'm doing a color conversion on this piece and required me to go through my stash and use my creative color sense to pull colors to suit the pattern. So I may or may not get credit for that because I kind of went a little, like, it's way out there. I mean, it's not like there's no water elements. There's no, obviously it's not blue. But I did use my creativity in creating my creative reasoning, and that's why I'm a Ravenclaw. So let me show you the 400-ish stitches that I put in that. So if you are not familiar, this is HL's Moth by Kathy Barrick, and I'm loving this. I have not moved back over to the 40 count yet. So I had so many awesome comments about try the 40, you're going to love it, keep going. Just have good lighting. I'm, I'm going to push through. I'm just, I have to rip out the first stitches because I don't think they're right. And so that's daunting first because I don't want to rip the fabric. And so we're going to get there. So I put 400 stitches in this and it's so cool. But it's going to be really hard to see because unfortunately I'm stitching all the boring, the cream color. And I haven't gotten to the fun, awesome parts of the wing. So you will see where I've gotten to. And I did switch up a bit on the antennas because the antenna are supposed to be this creamy color. And while I think the cream is gonna pop when the other colors get get close by, I'm, I was fearful that the antenna would disappear. So I went ahead and stitched them in this color, which is Gentle Arts Old Hickory. This is Classic Color Works Tufted Yellow. And so far I'm loving it. And this is on a Mystic Fabrics in Veteris or Veteris, and it's a 16 count Weigert Ada. So I'm loving where this is now. It's so much fun. And let me put this, and this is currently, this has a pouch too I'm gonna share. I just did not get around to putting things in pouches yesterday, and I finished them up yesterday. Um, but it is in a bag right now. Okay, then I moved on to the three other tasks, all from Prairie School or Tree Farm. So for the earth, green or Slytherin. Um, I use Prairie School or Tree Farm because it features many, many trees and trees go, grow from the good earth. Then for Fire Red Gryffindor, I said that one of the houses had smoke coming out of the chimney and that would definitely mean there was a cozy fire in the fireplace and I did provide a close up of the little house with the little smoke coming out. And then for Wood Brown, I said I'm using Prairie School or Tree Farm as there's lots of wood in the trees and the houses are likely older and also made of wood. So I had 600 plus stitches in this project. So I'd already had the 500 from the weekend plus the 600. So I'm like, yeah, it's looking so good. Or I think it's looking really good. And then um, to answer the question of did my potion work? I said, no, sadly my potion did not work. I finished all of my tasks in like one day or like a day and a half. I'm telling you, I trucked through stitches. You're gonna see when I continue on with all I stitched this week. And I said it didn't work because I believe I made it too quickly and too far in advance. So my love potion did not work, but that is okay. So if you will remember, I am stitching Prairie School or Tree Farm. And this is what the Prairie School or Tree Farm is meant to look like. Lots of reds and greens and browns. Prairie Schooler is a big fan of 3371. I am okay with it in small quantities, but not near that quantity. So I am doing my own creative color conversion with a ridiculous amount of floss. And if you go back to my previous video, 
I do go through every gloss I'm using and I will maybe eventually provide a color conversion on my blog. The only reason I might not is some of these were grab bags, mysteries. They may not have, they may not, they're not going to be available. And so I feel badly about providing that. So this is on a, this is on a piece of under the sea fabrics. This is one I got in a mystery eighth and this is on Ice Princess and it is an 18 count Ada. It is stitching on a Stitcher's 8. And this is where I've gotten to. Yay! So I've stitched completely this house and this is Victorian Mono oh, Lavender Mosaic, I believe. This is in Weeks Dye Work Glacial Mist. This house is complete. Both roofs are in multi-shaded grays by Victorian Mono. I've stitched some trees in Ships Manor Sea Spray and Ships Manor Garden Pe no, not Garden Peas, something, something garden. And then I am now currently done with the orange part of this house, and this is Victorian Motto in Sunset, maybe? It was a monthly color, and then it will get the multi-shaded grays as a house, as a, as the roof. I love it! And I'm loving how this almost looks like a like a wood plank house with how the variegation is going. So, so far so good. I will say I was frustrated with the week style works. I don't, I think it's me. I don't know if it's something I do differently, but I do not have the same problem with all of my hand dyes. Week style works for some reason, like almost immediately knots up on me. So it's kind of frustrating. So I don't know if that's just me or that's other people. Anyway. So then, since I finished my extra credits, since I finished my homework, I was like, what's, what's next? Year-long tasks. I finished 24-hour challenge, the 24. I finished that like a week and a half ago. And so, yeah, I went on to year-long challenges. So... The first one that I worked on, and this was for the task, I think, of an item that's at the winter ball. I'm gonna verify that because I have posted these to my to my sage post. Um, excuse me, cracking my knuckles. Nobody likes to hear that. Um, no, that was for that. Let's see. I'm actually using this one. I've used it for one year long already. I, had, I just finished another one and then it's got one more and it still will have time. Oh, this was what it was for. It was for task number 16, which is Harry and Ron each got seven owls, O-W-L-S. And I said that the reason why I picked this one is Harry and Ron took an astronomy owl and this piece features star shapes and motifs that look like constellations. And then I put a picture of the model for reference. I put a thousand and one stitches in this in roughly a day and a half. So my stitching hand was on like overdrive this week. I don't know. This is the Merry and Bright Sal by Ships Manor. I love my Ships Manor. And this is of course gonna blow it completely out, but it is really super cute. This was one that was just another stitch along he did. He does a lot of really awesome stitch alongs and I've yet to participate in one actually when it's being stitched. And this is on an 18 count Navy Ada. Um, not a hand dye, just one I found. And this is where I am so far. And for some reason, I need something behind this. So that it'll look pretty. Let's see, let me try my, put my moth back here so it doesn't show through. There we go. That is better. So, I was to about this point, so I stitched these trees. This motif is giving me life. I posted this one on Instagram. It's amazing. These ornaments, which remind me of the vintage ones my mom's collect, my mom collects, and this motif is really cool. This is the top corner, top corner, bottom corner. So I only have this amount left. And so three quarters of what's left will be the next thousand stitches. And I could have chosen to continue on with this, but I needed, I needed a switch, and that's why I have all these whips, is to switch as needed. This is in all the called for. They are all Ships Manor. Super bright fun, and these are two of my favorites that are stitching up so fun. This is called Lou's Lolly. 
And then a similar one, but a little more muted, is Yuletide Treasure. So, fun stitching this. And this is in a project bag that I made out of some fabric that was originally Hobby Lobby that was on a bulletin board in my classroom once upon a time. And I've had it in my stash. And I was like, yank, thank you. Repurposed. All right, so then, as if that wasn't enough, I went to another year-long tasks. I am not done with this one. I started this one, and I am using this for the task of the seven passages to Hogsmeade, and I'm stretching this, I think, a little bit. This is in a pouch with this really cute travel fabric, and you will see why. I, am, I have started for our family a travel map cross-stitch. So I am in the process of stitching the outline of the United States. This is on a Mystic hand-dyed fabric in 18 count, and this is Big Sky. This was, I think, last month's, um, last month's fabric of the month. So as you can see, I have gotten, I of course started with Texas, because Texas, y'all. And then I did some stitching and then I started going around and anywhere there's a new state that's gonna pop in, I went ahead and put in the starting of the border. So it'd be easier. I am, I have also already, I kind of contemplated on how am I gonna do this? Cause this is a, a ongoing project. And so I ended up creating a dowel pocket. So I'm gonna get a dowel rod, maybe paint it, probably not cause it's gonna be this length and then it'll hang on the wall, pressed obviously once the outline is done and I've stitched in where we've traveled since my daughter has been born. And then when I'm not stitching it and we're not adding new things to it, we're gonna put it up. And then what I figured I would do is, cause we visited California four times in her life, is California will get stitched in and then any of the places we visited, I will mark with a bead. Um, so I'll pick a fun color that coordinates. I haven't really decided yet the pattern that I purchased on Etsy has a color, it kind of goes from like, I don't know, kind of rainbowish across the United States. I don't know if I'm going to do it like that or not. But so like in California, we've been to San Francisco twice, we've been to San Diego once, and we've been to Anaheim. So those will all have a bead to mark. Um, so yeah, I'm really liking this so far. My mom asked me, I showed it to her, she goes, well, are you going to finish the end, Beth? So yes, I am. I'm gonna actually go in and kind of do a bias finish like on a, like a binding. So I'm actually gonna pull this off, use this fabric, I think I have enough, and do a binding like as if it was a quilt. But I kind of wanted to make sure this was gonna fit and it's gonna have plenty of room. Now here's the problem, folks, is this pattern that I purchased, you know, I didn't look, I didn't do my full investigating doesn't have Alaska and Hawaii, which I find kind of a little tacky because if you're going to do a United States map, maybe include all the United States. I'm starting to get a little hot. My face getting a little red. So I'm thinking, what am, I'm going to have to go chart. I did contact the seller and say, hey, do you have Alaska and Hawaii charted? Could I buy them? I'll buy them separately. I'm totally fine with that or I'll even pay you for your time. And I haven't heard back yet, so we'll see. Um, but I'm hopeful that maybe she's already got them done. If not, I may just pull like a free clip art of the state and chart my own. The problem is getting them to the right size so that like Alaska's not huge, Hawaii's not tiny, and they kind of go with this, the relative size of all the other states. I am stitching the outline in a coloring cotton. This is a um, mystery grab bag one and it's um, kind of a navy with some charcoal gray mixed in. It called for black, but I thought the black was a little too much. So I went ahead and went with that so it didn't look like that. So that is, so far I'm try gonna try to get that complete and that would be, yeah, that would be, oh, I didn't tell you what that was for. I said it was stretching it. There's seven passages to Hogsmeade and so I said that you could see the seven passages on the Marauders map, and that's a map, and so we'll see. If I don't get credit for it, no big deal. I still have a thousand stitches in that when all is said and done. So with that, we are done talking whips, and we're not too far in, and I don't have as much stash this week, so this could be good. 
Okay, we're going to go ahead and talk about plans real quick. And so my big plans are finish up the thousand. I'm about, I'm over halfway there on the United States map and I have the other 500 mapped out. So go ahead and finish those. Get that task checked off my list. I think I have, I'm over here. After that, I'll have six of 22. So I'm not, I don't think there's any way. I'm motoring through stitching right now, but once school gets back come August when I'm back in my classroom and school stuff and all of that, there's just not as much time to stitch during the day. Obviously, I'm working. Um, I'm not, I don't sit and like secretly stitch in my classroom. That would be funny. Um, uh, I say too many ums. I went and watched back my last video and I was like, oh my God, I did the and and the um. You wouldn't think I'm actually an English teacher, but anyway, I'm not really an English teacher, but I, but reading has been like my wheelhouse for many a years. I'm, I actually do the worry specials. Oh, and by the way, do you like my little crazy tiny ponytail? That's like the length of my hair. It's so tiny. All right, back on track, and then it's going kind of crazy back here. So, uh, it is what it is, too. It, like, got to 99 or more yesterday, and we got maybe there today. <laughs> But I'm going to get some dark colors on my temperature stitch. Woohoo! That's something exciting, I guess, about it being ridiculously hot. Um, so anyway, I don't think I will get all 22 of those tasks done because that's 22,000 stitches <laughs> in one year. And I didn't join until middle of February. And then when I started, I wasn't even hitting these. I didn't get a single year long task until like April. And that's because March and April came together and I was able to get all my extra credit and then I was able to move on. So now again, I finished all my extra credit and now I can move on to year long. But they just take a little bit longer and homework, you know, is the first priority each week. So yeah, plans, finish that. And then I've got, I've got a lot of the other year long slated so I will ping pong back to something else. I may do some more on Mary and Bright. I think I have a thousand slotted into Prairie School or Tree Christmas Tree. So yeah, I might go back to that and get a thousand in that, and that would be cool. That would be really cool. So yeah, that's my plans. Oh, and then ultimately I would like to sit down and just kind of start mulling it over in my head what I want in my whip album because I cannot change that come June, July 1st. What's in there is in there for the whole of the next book, which is July and August. So I gotta make sure I really wanna stitch on all the things in there. And then start working on those those extra credits. The uh, Start slotting some projects for those and thinking about those. Because some of them this time say whip, which means it has to be something that's already started. It can't be a new start. So I really kind of have to look and see, is there something I need to start now so that it's available to me? Let's see. I don't know. Okay, so that's my plan. So now I'm going to show you some project backs. You want to see some project backs? Yeah, look at the project backs. Okay, so I went and grabbed my stack of project backs. And when I say stack, it's a stack. It's bigger than my head. I'm so proud of myself. I finally sat down this week and finish this this project well, it's, it's an ongoing project but anyway so let me show you what I have and what each pro what I think is going in it so this one I have has this cute floral this is the fabric that I got that was around needle dance when I received it so it was enough if I had put the birds on their side so I wanted them to be standing up no more bat birds or dead birds or laying down birds so I added in some coordinating fabric and on the inside, I have this cute gray wood grain. This was all just from my stash. So Needle Dance is going to go in here. That's when I might get started soon. Oh, I'm excited about that one. All right, so Beautiful C is currently in a whale bag, but I'm going to be giving that whale bag. Um, I can't share that. I don't know who they want to give. Okay, anyway. So I found this Tula with jellyfish on it. Is that not amazing? Jeez. They're so cool. Tula fabrics are just amazing. 
it says in the room. Oh, and I will tell you, I was able to get a pouch out of a fat quarter for the outside and a fat quarter for the inside. And that's even with the directional fabrics. With ones like this where it could have gone any direction, I obviously had more left over on the directionals where I wanted it to go vertically or whatever. It was the perfect measurements. And on the inside, I have this blue coordinating quilt fabric that looks like water. I was gonna use this for something else back when I got it, but then I looked at it and went, um, yes. So Beautiful C is going in this one. All right, so this is my Quilting Bee pouch. This is another two left. I think this is from the All Stars line, and so it's got this cool funky bee. And Quilting Bee is super funky. So this is gonna go, Quilting Bee is going in here. And then it's got the coordinating turquoise with green dots. Super cute, another two left. We're gonna sense a theme, because this is too low, so. I could not resist. Look at these. Uh, they're like owl of flies. Half owl, half butterfly. Owl, owl, alter flies. Trademark. Alter flies. So, so cute. I don't know what's going in here yet. Coordinating is the floral print that's the opposite colorway. I don't know what's going in here yet. I need a new, I need a new owl forest embroidery. Actually, I'm going to tell you what pattern I'm trying to find right now. And I'm so sad because I saw it and I was like, need it. Go find it. It's nowhere to be found. It's Kathy Barrick's Painted Wings. Wouldn't that be cool in this? So if you see Painted Wings, or if you have it and you're ready to like part with it, it could go in this pouch. And I might even stitch it in those kind of colors. Okay, Christmas Tree Farm. This was from my stash, Funky Cool Trees. With cutesy little birds, Christmas tree farms going in here on the inside is a coordinating cutesy. Love it. You know, I said I had a project bad for Magical Moth for HL Moth, which is hashtag Magical Moth style. If I have never seen that is one magical moth on this bag. This is a Tula. Oh my gosh. Moth obsessed. So cool. So this is my pouch, obviously. And then the inside is the coordinating orangish, orangish fabric. So no, no fanciness on the inside. And since I'm going to probably be stitching two of these, I knew I had to have a bag for it. All right, then this is one I showed in a previous video. Cute birds with hats, earmuffs, and scarves. This is going to hold snowflakes and buttons. Inside is wood print. Or it's actually, it's that striated, like the blue, but it's, it's wood looking. Okay, this one, I love. It's got these fancy woodland creatures and triangle shaped strawberries. I don't remember what's going in. I think I have something going in this, but I don't remember. And the inside is peach and white polka dots. So cute. All right, so another one that I'm going to be working on for quite some time is my temperature stitch. So I was at my local quilt shop. Hold your horses, folks. Hold on to your hats if this is not perfect. Oh! <gasps> so this was a fabric I found there. I was like, score. It looks like raindrops, and it's all fun, the bright colors. It's the colors in my temperature chart. And then the inside is a coordinating pink polka dot. Because pink, hello. I don't even think pink is in my temperature stitch, but I don't care. And then afterwards, this could be a cute, like, spring project bag, whatever. Love it. I'm just tossing them over on the bed. And this one has a long, errant string that I just found. This is a, I showed this one in a video. This is a cute, tiny, tiny strawberries. And it has gingham on the inside. I think this one is going to hold... I don't know what it's going to hold, actually, because all my strawberry ones are in my other strawberry bag. Cute. It's going to hold something cute because it's super cute. Okay, this one was one that I also had purchased on a website um, on Etsy. And I think I also have this one slotted for something. I don't remember what it is. And then it's got turquoise hound's teeth on the inside. This was from my stash. Super cute. We're getting to the end, folks. 
All right, Our House by Lizzie Kate is going to go into this pouch. This is an old Alexander Henry. And I had a moment because I had had a vinyl front pouch made out of this. I, I'm just not loving those right now. And I was like, oh, I'm so sad. So I got on and Googled and Etsy'd and Fabric Source, tried to find more of it. And then I went and actually looked in my stash in the piles and piles of things that are shoved in an old dresser drawer and found a ton of it. And so this is going to be Our House by Lizzie Kate. And then inside is cute little sprouts. And unfortunately, I cut this one wrong, but what is? It's okay. All right, two more. Dying. This, this next one is Chula. How fantastic is that rabbit? He is fantastic. I mean, he's fantastic. He needs, like, his own clothing line. <laughs> he needs accessories. He's fancy. He's the fanciest hair I've ever seen. And I don't know. I, I have him down for something. I can't remember because I'm just in awe of this Jula fabric. And he's a little offset on the side, but that's okay because these, this flower motif right here. <laughs> la, 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 la. Love. Okay, on the inside is the pink striated. And it matches that pink like so perfectly. Love. Okay, this last one, and I think I'm going to pronounce this probably wrong, is a Kathy Facet. Sure. And it is, I got this at my local quilt shop. It's cabbage. But it's like, or artichokes. But it's like strawberry artichokes. <laughs> so like I saw it and went, strawberry artichoke! Or strawberry cabbage. It is amazing. This is a beautiful fabric. Like, fabric designers are, like, <sighs> amazing. And then I did a kind of a coordinating batik on the inside. And this was just one I found a fat quarter in there, a fat quarter bin. Um, love. I don't know what's going in this one either. I think I know what's going in this one. No, I don't. So, anyway, that's all the project bags I made. And I'm pretty excited about that. All right, so let's talk a little bit of stash acquisitions. Add it to the stash this week. I do every week. At some point, I'm going to switch from the stash acquisition to, like, chill out on buying stuff. We'll see. So let me pause this while I grab my bucket of fun. So I said I was going to grab my bucket of fun. The problem is when I put it in my lap, it covered up half of my face. No biggie. I'll just pull from the bucket. So the first one I've alluded to already, which is the Jeremiah 2911, is being um, stitched with a Mrs. Sadas Imas um, silk, and she's on Etsy, and she sent me a cutesy note, this cute little, it looks like a glow-in-the-dark needle minder, I think it might be, and it has a pretty pink sparkly back, and then this is her thread conditioner. Um. And she had said she was sending me that. And I thought, how sweet is that? Especially if you've not worked with silk. Having that available was awesome. I didn't need it, but it might come in handy someday. I feel certain it will. So I've already put these in floss aways. So what I did was on her Etsy page, you can buy big hanks of a colorway. Or you can buy like a 10 count and tell her what you would like. So with my 10 count, I got two popcorn. And then I got... So Jan Hicks enables me with her Northern Expressions pattern she's working. I think it's Shades of Gold that she's doing in Darling. And it's on that beautiful kind of golden straw colored fabric. Yeah, she enabled me. So now I must stitch something. I don't know what it's going to be in Darling. So I got three of this. That's not enough to do, I don't think, Shades of Gold. But it might be enough to do something something else I may have to figure out what it would be what like how much is actually on me but I mean that's beautiful I love turquoise and they, these are gorgeous I mean they are such high quality and then I could not resist I actually got five of these because I was thinking these would be good for oh I ordered these for my long dog sampler 
before I settled on the two Victoria Motto colors. So this is the colorway Rebecca. And so it's a pretty purples. It's got like purple and light blue. I think it's really pretty. So that one is going to go slotted for some other really beautiful pattern. So I highly recommend Mrs. Sadas. I will do a show notes blog post. I hope some of you maybe checked that out and liked that I shared my links to stuff. Um, and I will link her Etsy shop. So service was extraordinary. I loved it. Okay, so then, then, because I don't have enough Victorian motto, I went on and when I ordered, I needed more of the antique rose petals and so I went ahead and ordered that and when I did I ordered some more floss and I also ordered some trims and I actually used this trim on my finish I have to share my finish okay remind me remind me I have to share my finish so I got this this is um antique red chenille trim and her chenille her trims are beautiful and then I got this cute light blue cotton lace trim great prices too on them I love everything Nancy does. Okay, so these are all from her Etsy shop. So I'm just going to quick see how. This is Wild Acorns, which is approximately $8.40. Tropical Orchid. It does not have a conversion. I might need to know where my camera is to show you. Um, this is Melon, and I thought this was a great prim color. And this is 407 3064. This was my free gift, which is Variegated Violets, which is beautiful. Rose Verbena, I am a sucker for pinks. This is a great, this is a more highly variegated one from her. Some of hers are mildly, this one's highly and I like it. 152, 37, 33. Whoa, that's all I'm for. Fuchsia Rainbow, love, and that is 3804. Excuse me. Hope you like the top of my head. I'm in a very interesting mood. I haven't had a very good night's sleep the last few nights, so I'm starting to get a little goofy giddy. Scarlet Carnation, you need a good red. That's a really beautiful red. Ballet Slipper, a good prim. Medium pink, 3722. Rosy Rouge, which is 962. I'm liking the focus on this a lot better. And then I got, she does what she calls Flow Blue, and she has Flow Blue Dark. And this is the number 16 dye lot. Oops. And I'm actually using flow blue dark and I think the same dye lot as my border for tree farm and then she does flow blue light which you can see there's more gray and more medium blue and that's dye lot 13 I'm starting to get tall here in my stack blue heaven which is 932 cloudy day which is 3747 Antique Cherry, it's another good prim. And that's 356 slash 3380. Mountain Pines, you gotta have a good 934, which I'm gonna tell you, I've watched Jessie Marie enough to know that she loves her 934. She just finished Opus 2 in 934. But I love that Victoria Motto has a 934 conversion. Beautiful. Mountain Pines. Sienna Brown, 3772. I have several patterns that call for this. And silver lining, and somebody I, I was watching was stitching something with this, and I was like, I need it, which is 648. So, um, I got the big bag this time. It held a lot. But I was very excited to get all of these. I'm slowly but surely um, amassing a very large collection. And that's okay. And I'm starting to use them more in patterns. Because obviously, unless you're stitching one of Nancy's patterns, it likely doesn't, it's not going to call for Victoria Motto. Everybody needs to be on board with Victoria Motto, so that's all i got to say. Because her stuff is incredible, and you cannot beat the fact that you get 20 yards per skein. For the same price as some of these that are 5 yards. Okay, so then I got my nest egg, and I have made the, the decision for the time being because I'm such on the Victoria Motto train, I've decided that I'm going to take a break from color and cotton for right now and from my nest egg. 
and I went ahead and upped my Victorian motto to 12 of Prem and 12 of Limited Editions. I'm really excited about that. So here were the ones that I got. We are kind of in the P, P, R, and S, or no, just maybe R and S. So we've got sage and roasted marshmallow, royal purple and raspberry frost, red plum and red grape. Those look pretty together. Sarsaparilla and rose garden. Sable and Ruby Slipper. So, that this this is my last month of nest egg for a while. Um, I'll probably go back. I mean, I don't know what she's planning to do. I've heard rumors that she's going to switch to wool when she's through the alphabet anyway. So I may just wait a few years until she's back on um, the cottons. So, with that being said, I did decide to go ahead and cancel my color and cotton for now for for the time being because they have such a great selection on their site anyway that i thought i could probably go and get most anything that i would like um speaking of they're having through sunday i think a 20 percent off of all of their floxes and so i went ahead and did a conversion on two charts with those one of them i'm going to share with you because it came um in the mail and I went ahead and did a real quick conversion on color and cotton um, and took advantage of that 20% off and you don't have to have a coupon it's just you click and it'll it'll do it in your cart and then I also did a conversion on the Annie B's folk art count your blessings and so I went ahead and did that one in color and cotton so I'm excited about those so then that brings me to some stash unloadies actually some of these are stash unload some of them are because of Stash Unload in Searcha. So let me just say, Stash Unload has an in Searcha file. It's in the file section. And you can, uh, is it in the file? I think it is. You can go in there and you can say, hey, I'm searching for such and such. And if somebody sees it, they can comment on it. If they have it, they can comment on it. So I had, um, I had two things I was in search of. Actually, I think there's one more I'm in search of, and I just don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, but I do have my action in search of. So one of them is Blackbird Designs by the Chimney with Care, and this is, they, they did a whole year series of three stockings a month, and this is January's. These are extremely hard to find. I actually ordered it from two different places, and both of those places have gone rogue, and I'm never going to see those patterns, or the money that I paid for the patterns, and so anyway awesome person on stash unload in search of said hey check out needlework d stash they had three i think they have one left and i was like oh, oh, quick is on facebook the needlework d stash facebook page and i was like scroll 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 find it blackbird designs when you know it the person that said they had seen it claimed the second one and there was one left and so what's cool about that is then I could browse and see, okay, what else? Because no chart can travel alone. They're a shop. They're actually a brick and mortar. And they de-stashed stuff through their Facebook page. And then, so all throughout the week when they post things, you can be like, me, please, me, please, me, me, please. They kind of collect a little pile. You call by Saturday, give them in your info. And if you've done it before, which I have, they had a lot of my info already. They needed my credit card number again. And then they sent it to me, look at a split, just like that. So this has three stockings, Winter Carnation, Old Lang Syne. This was the one I'm most excited about, which is the birthday stocking. And it only has five, it only has five colors. And I'm doing this one in color and cotton. So when those come in, I will show you what I did. And it comes with, I'm gonna try to uncover that, but it comes with the stocking so I'm super excited about this. There's a lot of these that are really cool, but for sure, January, February are very hard to find. And so I'm thrilled. I am thrilled. And I paid retail. Like, that's amazing. And that's what this community is so good about. It's like, hey, thanks for sharing. So when I was shopping through there, they had a listing for Cricut Collection. And so I went ahead and grabbed this one. And this is their information, the needle workshop. And they're out of Wisconsin. And this is Summer Acorns. And there's a strawberry. 
a watermelon. This is like a 4th of July one. This one is like a rabbit. And then this one's like a flower basket. And they have cute names too. There's acorn. Oh, that's the one with the rabbit. It's acorn, may basket acorn, berry corn, which is June, melon corn, <laughs> not like melancholy, melon corn, which is July, and then cracker corn, which is your July 4th one because it looks like fireworks. So that was a cute one to have too in my collection. These would be fun to stitch up. And have, um, I don't know for what, but they're just fun. And they're cute little charts. And most of them are only like 23 by 26. So these should be fairly quick stitches. So that was another fun one. Okay, so those I got together. And then I'm insane. I'm like, I'm still in shock. And like, I screamed when this came in the mail. Somebody, I had posted that I was desperately in search of two patterns that like, I feel like they truly are unicorns. Like, I have seen people have them. But I don't know how they got them other than they bought them when they very first came out. Because it's like, or it's stitching legend. Um, so, are you ready for this? Somebody commented and said, hey, I was at Stitchville USA today and they had one. Call and see if they still do. And I was like, what? I literally like ran out of the phone. I was like, yeah. Hello, do you have such and such? And I held on the line patient, like, yes, we do. What's your information? Send it to you. And I was like, oh. or ETN, Quaker Oz. And yeah. And Garrett over at Coffee Stitcher, he is doing this and it's an, it's gorgeous. And I know that she has Alice. That's the one I'm looking for, is the Quaker Fantasies Alice. But I'm going to keep my feelers out there, and I'm going to keep thinking the good stitchy vibes. So, and this was at retail also. Okay, I got one more thing. And this was another stash unload, and I've been looking for this. And this is not an out-of-print pattern. I could have bought it on 123Stitch. The problem with 123Stitches, it probably would have cost me $85. Because then I would have been like, no, I can't just get that. Let's go to my wish list. Click, 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 click. And it would have been $85. So I found this one. It's actually, it was less than retail, even with shipping. And I'm going to do this one for my husband. So sh he sometimes watches my videos. He says he does. He doesn't watch through all of them, though. But that's okay. And this is Little House Needleworks. Take me out to the ball game. And somebody had posted that they had done this and they had changed some of the um, spectators and the uh, player to be their team. And so my husband is a huge Houston Astros fan. And so I am going to switch up some of the coloring on this. And I know it's supposed to look like the 4th of July, but I'm thinking how cool would it be to turn these banners that are red into orange, orange, blue, and white, and then um, change the uniform. So yeah, I'm excited about that and change some of the spectators in, in the um, in the crowd. In the crowd. So that's on my not so short list of things to stitch. So we've talked about a lot of things. And this one may actually end up being shorter and hopefully it will be uploaded tonight. Hopefully you're seeing this on Friday if you're choosing to watch it. I really do appreciate if you do decide to watch. Um What's coming up this week is my daughter had an awesome week at her little fun day camp at school. It was Lego themed. So they did all sorts of really super fun Lego activities. Um, she wants to do camp next week too. And I'm like, are you sure you don't want to spend some time with me? And she's like, mommy, I love you, but I want to go and have fun at my camp. And I said, okay. And so it's patriotic theme and they've already started talking about what they're going to do. And she's really excited. I'm hopeful, fingers crossed, all of my cabinetry is in, in my new classroom. They're waiting on carpet, and that's it. And then I would be, and then some cleanup, and then I will be able to move in. So maybe I could be in next week. We do travel in the middle of July, and I'd love to be moved in by then. So anyway, that's really all I have this week. I really hope you're having a great week yourself. Um, feel free to comment and let me know something you'd like to see me share. If you have any questions about what, about me, about my stitching, about the places that I like to shop. And again, if you'll check out the description box below, I will have a link to, um, 
it's my Wix page and it's just a really simple place where I can put in all of the things I talked about today, the patterns. Um, some of them I can't share a link because they're not readily available anywhere. Um, but I will probably share a link to my two favorite stash pages. They are rather dangerous. Um, and if you're in school of magical stitches, I can't wait to see your whip albums. I can't wait to see those update. And I wish you happy stitching this week. And until we talk again, have a blessed week and have a relaxing week and hopefully it is not insanely hot where you are or if it is you're able to maintain that because I know that the heat starts to get really oppressive in places that don't have the afforded comfort of air conditioning. So I'm always prayerful during the summer that people who are at a, at a place that's more that are in a personal place of I can't even think of the, the words I'm trying to say, but are more vulnerable, like youth and elderly. I do, I do genuinely sh pray for those people um, this time of the year, and especially those who are in places that aren't normally hot, so they don't have the pre preparations. Like, we're blessed here in Texas that central air is a thing, and not just great central air, but like fans in every room, and, you know, energy efficient homes, and things of that nature. Because we're prepared for it to be 100 plus. But when places around our country get these heat waves that they're not prepared for, it's kind of, it's dangerous. So, hopefully it's comfortable where you are. I think I saw something today about it still snowing in Colorado. <laughs> it's like, snowing? It's the first day of summer was yesterday. Um, anyway, it's summer here. Hence the crazy old hair. I had to get it off, off myself. I was just like, I, I gotta get... <sighs> That's me. Until we talk again, have a great week. Bye. So I'm sitting in my living room, putting my video on my laptop in iMovie, and I realized I didn't show my big finish this week. So my finish that I fully finished is headed on its way. Actually, it's already arrived at the person that I was swapping with. And so I did take some pictures and so I will insert those after this little clip. So I hope you enjoy seeing my fully finished object, which was uh, strawberries and stripes from With Thy Needle and Thread and I finished it as on a Hobby Lobby candle holder. So enjoy and again, have a great week. Bye.